Okay, well, hello. How are you? Fine, thanks. Yes. So we're here because of um, the release of your latest album called uh, Have a Nice Day. When I was telling people that I was going to interview Roxette, they, they all thought that it was a comeback. But mm. when I re read your bio, there was a lot of things you have been doing in, in the meanwhile. Mm. So could you tell me a little bit what you have been up to? After yeah, the well, basically what has taken most of the time is to, to, you know, to get families, you know. <laughs> that takes a long time. <laughs> Maybe got another kid in uh, 96, I think. And I got a son in 97 and it um, uh -huh. takes a long time. <laughs> yeah. um, but otherwise, we've been doing different musical things. You know, we, we decided to take a little break from Roxette after the Crash Boom Bang Tour in 95. Uh -huh. And we re eventually released a Greatest Hits album and a Ballads album in Spanish, but nevertheless... We we needed a we needed time to take you know take care of ourselves, uh -huh. do other things, get a new life. energy for the mm. yeah new album. Yeah. We had been basically been, been traveling and, and recording and promoting for seven years, you know. So we, it was time to take yeah, a rest. Yeah, that's a long time. Mm -hmm. And um, but um, was it um, were you doing a lot of stuff for your solo careers? In the meantime, because in Holland that's not really known, mm. but in Sweden you are really popular by your not just by Roxette but also mm. your solo careers. Mm. How was that? Well, it was. Uh, I have tried in between Roxette albums to do some solo albums, just uh, writing in Swedish, singing in Swedish, it's, uh, because I think it's. Um, I missed that a little bit, and uh, also it's nice. Uh, I mean to do something else for a while as well and then when you go back into Roxette you have load your batteries again so it's um, and also I was involved in a soundtrack as well and um, soundtrack for which movie? For a Swedish that? movie for a Swedish yeah. movie and also so I mean it's good to know for a while just work with other people and you know do something totally different mm -hmm. and um, but like Per said it was we all also needed a, a break from Roxette not 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 that we were, you know, that we were tired of this, the, the whole thing. It's just that we were a little bit tired of Per and Marine Roxette. We want to go back to, to Per and Marine and private. So it's, um, Is it, it was different? quite natural, the break. And I also I think it was really good for our fans as well that now it feels like there's a new, fresh need for Roxette again. Yeah, because do so you think that it's, it will be the same people um, buying your records and, and going to your concert as the, as the people were in 1986 or no. 1989 when you started? No, it's, okay. no, I don't think it's the same. But maybe some of them are, uh -huh. uh, of course, still there. But I, I think it's, it's will be great if there's going to be some new ones as well. Yeah, because, because the music didn't really change, mm -hmm. right? No, I, the music, I mean, we try to update our sound all the time in a natural way because, I mean, times are changing. Uh -huh. But, I mean, you, you can't really change your roots. And we come from the, the early 70s, you know, that's when we were teenagers, we listened to, you know, the Bowie and T-Rex and even the 60s sound. So, I mean, that's our roots. And, and uh, Roxette will always be a very song, melody-oriented band. But uh, we try to bring in uh, things that interest us. You know, the whole dance movement in the late 90s has been very interesting. And we try to bring little dance elements and, you know, produce records in a slightly different way than we had before, without losing the Roxette trademarks, so to speak. Yeah. So, um, because I read that this new record, there were four producers on it. Mm. That seems to me really difficult. Yeah, two of those were actually us, you know. So it's, Yes. Uh, <laughs> we we worked yeah. together with two guys Michael Elbert, who, who is also an, an engineer, and of course Clarence Overman, who's been producing Roxette since '86. Uh -huh. So it's the four of us who's been doing, been the core of this this uh, whole project. Was this the new thing that like you produce both? Did you produce the the other album? Crash no, not Man? really. I mean, we we were. Uh, I mean, it's it's just that we, we it was uh, we we wanted to be part of part of the production. Uh, uh, in writing, <laughs> we haven't uh -huh. been done that before, uh, so it, it's just the way we wanted to, to you know, we want we want to have this production credit as well. 
Yes. So did that? It's, the, it's an ego thing, isn't it? Yeah, I guess it <laughs> is. But m- m- more maybe now you're more involved with the album also. Right? No, 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 it's no, no difference. We always been you know very very yeah. involved all the time. It's it's more like Clarence was always you know his, his title was producer and uh-huh. I was pair and doing this and Maria was doing that. So it's it's uh, I mean it's no big difference you know. It's just that Michael is the big difference I think you know he he brought a lot of uh, new energy into the production team because he's a uh, First of all, he's ten years younger than us. Yeah. He, he comes. Uh, he comes from a totally different background. He, he, his, he comes from a sort of Depeche Mode sort of vein of music, you know. And, and uh, he just brought a lot of great new, fresh blood into our veins, you know. Mm. Yes. And was it working with him? Was it difficult, or was it? Well, uh, I think in the beginning it was a little bit um, tough because. I mean, we're used to a team. You've always been working with, I mean, with Clarence. We know uh-huh. so well. Um, we know him so well. And so for me, it was felt a little bit, took a while before I could really relax and, you know, trust my clear. But I mean, when, yes. I mean, when you do vocals, a lead vocal for, in a song, so much to have to do with, you know, with, with feelings and you must feel relaxed. And, and it takes a while before, you know, Because really can relax in front of him, yes. Yeah. So, but the, then after a while, it, it went very well, and uh, yeah. So it, it was a, in the end. I mean, when we were doing the mixes and everything, it was we had great fun, and so it's yeah, it feels so, good. So you recorded partly uh, of the record in in Spain, in Spain. Mm-hmm. Um, why was that? Is there a no no real reason why it became Spain? I and mean, we we were looking for a studio where we could actually live. In the house where the studio was, so we found a studio in outside Marbella, yeah, called El Cortijo. Cortijo. <laughs> you worked on your Spanish also. Yeah. Well, I should have. <laughs> uh, well, anyway, we 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 uh, we went there with uh, the music, some of the musicians and our families and everything. Uh-huh. So we were actually living in the same. That same was house. the reason why you want to live at the yeah. studio to bring your families with you. Yeah, and to focus a lot on the recording instead of going to to, to uh, you know Cote d'Azur or to Spain or whatever, and, and you know live somewhere by the beach and then go to the studio. And, you know, it doesn't really work like that. It's better to focus. Uh-huh. Uh, so uh, for a month we stayed in this house and we hardly ever left. You know, we just focused on the recording, which was good, because we 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 um, it was very very easy to get motivated and. Uh, It was just wonderful to leave Sweden in January, you know, because the weather is so cold here. Yeah, I noticed. Yeah. <laughs> But is it is it was it good to have your family around while making the record? Doesn't that distract you all the time? No, it's of course. I mean, my daughter Josephine, she's six, uh-huh. so sometimes she was a little bit fed up with. <laughs> oh, do you have to go <laughs> go be with in me that to studio? Beach, Mama. Yeah, yes, mm. exactly. So, uh, but it, it worked out really well. It's. Um, I think it's also very important to, to bring in the kids, for example, and the family, because then it's, they so much more understand what we are doing and uh-huh. what it's all about. So, so when she hear which I could fly on the radio today, she oh, she oh, well, I remember when you recorded that in Spain. Oh, now and she it understands was, how the yeah, process so it's, it's goes. Yeah, so it's very, very good, I think, to to bring them as much as possible. It's, it's important. So the new the new single is "Wish I Could Fly." Is there a special reason why this? Became the first single of your album. Uh, well, it's uh, it was extremely hard to pick the first thing. You know, we we had so many options, but the the main reason is that it's it's got all those elements that that um, people you know re- recognize in Roxette. You know, it's got a very strong chorus, uh-huh. but at the same time, it sounds very fresh. You know, we, we the production is. Uh, Quite different from from recent records that we've done, so it had those elements that we wanted to, you know. It's a it's a great teaser for the album, you know, uh, and we're really pleased that it works so well for us with, with "Wish I Could Fly" because it's 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 not like a it's not like a how do you do with that sort of song. It's more like it takes a couple of you know you, you need to hear it a couple of times before you really get it. Yeah. Uh, so it's uh, it's quite sophisticated, um, but we're really pleased that it works. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Would would it be terrible if it, if it didn't work? Yeah, I mean it is. I mean, you be, we've been working on the album for one and a half year, and if you release the first single that doesn't work, you know, you're always in trouble. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yes. The first single is is actually the the most important thing in the whole you know in the whole lifespan of the whole album. Uh-huh. Uh, so, uh, f- 
for us now, the, the next step for us is to make the album, you know, kick in and uh, eventually more and more singles. So uh, we will decide later on that we can, the album is so successful so we can, you know, go on a tour. That's yes. the target. Because yeah. are you good? So that will, do you decide to go on tour if the album works? Yeah, yeah. that's yeah? the plan. Yeah. It would be great. I mean, we have always been a touring band, and we have a tour with every album. Because released. live, you are really great to see. Yeah, this is uh, this really one of our strongest sides. Quality to, to mm. play live. Yes, mm. so it's um, we're looking forward to another world tour. It would be great. Do you think that's the the, the nicest part of, of being a musician? Absolutely. I th that's what it's all about. I think. I mean, that's what play and sing, and you know. Because you have been our fans. Life. It's the only way to to contact. meet our fans. Mm. This is the music factory 